Okay, so how many skills can I get? I can't tell you that. What skills are there? I can't tell you that. What about slot upgrades? I can't tell you that. Well, what can you tell me? I like your hat. Oh, thank you. Ladies, gentlemen, and masters of all ages, with the addition of the Curious Crafting System and Title Update 1, we've been given one hell of a bonus endgame system to mess around with. Something that feels incredibly strange, hard to quantify, and pretty difficult to understand at a glance. Essentially, every armor piece now has the same RNG capability as a talisman. And while the system is mysterious, this is, of course, a video game, and as a result, there are certain values and limits that this RNG has to work within, which, thanks to some data mining by a user who goes by DTLNOR, we have this information, and today I'm going to be doing my best to present the information that we've learned in the most digestible fashion possible. Obviously, it's a bunch of numbers, so it'll still be a little bit hard unless you're paying good attention, so make sure that you get some brain juice into your system before you sit down for this. We'll talk about the absolute highest limits of this system, the average things that you can expect, and just a general walkthrough about how the whole thing works. The first thing done understand here is that every change to an armor piece has a point value, positive or negative. And the reason that this system is actually more complex than talismans is because you can lose defense, you can lose resistance points, and you can lose the base skills that are on your base armor as a whole. And if you do so, you actually get more points, able to be spent for new games. If your defense goes up, that costs points from your augment roll. If your defense goes down, that gives you back points to be spent on the augment roll. Skills cost points to get based on the quality that they are assigned within the game files, and if you lose a skill from your armor that just gives you back points once again. To show this in detail, every armor piece up to Tetranodon is capable of spending 20 points in a single curious craft. From Ingot to Somnicanth, you can get 18 points worth of augmenting. From Auroracanth to Almadron, also including Rachnikadaki, you get 16 points of augment crafting. From Magmadron to Snowshear, you get 14 points worth of augments. Grand God's Pier to Sailor gets 12 points. And then finally, from Archfiend all the way down to Lucent Narga, you only gain 10 points of potential augment. These are all the base numbers that an armor piece has to work with by default, but as I've already mentioned, you can gain more points to work with by having negative skills as well. For a good example, and before we get into the nitty gritty of all the numbers of everything else, each armor piece is capable of a maximum of having seven augmentations, seven changes, positive or negative, the amount of changes cannot be more than seven. Also, it's worth mentioning that you can have the same change doubled if it happens. For example, the maximum amount of defense added to an armor piece is 40, but you can roll higher than plus 40 if it hits defense for two out of your seven changes. As such, if we still want room for some positives, let's say that your armor piece has four negatives. The maximum amount of defense loss is 12, which will give you five points extra to spend. The maximum amount of element resistance loss is three, which gives you three points extra to spend. Removing a skill from the base armor gives you 10 points extra to spend. So let's say that you did all of that with a second element resistance negative on top. Your armor piece would then gain 21 points of room to spend elsewhere, and a minimum rare piece such as the Kimura Legacy Armor would then have a maximum of 41 points available to spend on its rest of its augments, on the positive bonuses. Let's say that you only want pure offensive skills. What's the best that you can do with 41 points? Well, to show you the upper limits of what the system could reach before we get into the nitty gritty of what everything else is worth, 41 points can get you something along the lines of Critical Boost plus 1, Weakness Exploit plus 1, and Offensive Guard plus 1, or it can get you Attack Boost plus 1, 2 decorations Duration slot upgrades, and plus one chain crit. This is essentially the absolute maximum that you can gain offensively from the curious crafting of a single piece of armor, and to get that costs you a lot of defense as well. It's not possible to get multiple ranks of the same skill from this system, and it is not possible to get more than one high tier skill without having a load of negatives as well to make space for it. As such, the upper limit of this system is actually quite reasonable when you work this all out. A separate little fun note here that is actually a little bit sad, the Ibushi and Narwa armor set have their own upgrade table entirely and are completely unable to get new skills. This sort of makes sense though as it would obviously be a bit broken if Storm Soul could affect a totally new skill added to the armor as you could get two new skills on each piece of armor and have them maxed out by this effect. So for the rest of this, consider Ibushi and Narwa the same as every other rarity 10 armor piece but without the ability to augment skills onto it. Now let's get into the values of each potential change to your armor, starting with the thing that everyone cares about the most, skills. Just like Talisman, skills are 
divided up into tiers, and each tier of skills costs a different amount of points if it gets put on your armor. The S tier skills are the group that the devs decided were the strongest, and it consists of classic offensive skills like attack boost, weakness exploit, critical boost, and everything else that is currently on the screen. All S tier skills cost 15 points, and it's important to know that you can't get multiple ranks of the same skill, though you can get multiple skills of the same tier if you have the point space on the armor from getting negatives elsewhere. The A tier skills cost 12 points of your augment budget, and they are things like Handicraft, Chain Crit, and Agitator. The B tier skills cost 9 points, and consist of things like Protective Polish, Critical Element, Offensive Guard, and Wirebug Whisperer. The C tier skills cost 6 points, and these skills go to slightly more utility based skills like Quick Sheath, Stamina Surge, Constitution, Guard Up, and Evade skills. And then finally, the D tier skills cost 3 points, and it consists of things like Divine Blessing, Element Attack and Resistance, Spirit Bird's Call, and Diversion. Any skill that isn't shown here cannot show up through the armor augment system, and for the most part, these are just the unique monster skills that also are not able to show up on talismans. After this, let's talk about slot upgrades. Every augment is capable of giving you a maximum of three slot upgrades, and the way that these work is they prioritize giving you new slots where none were available before, adding a level one slot to the armor piece. If you already have three separate slots on your armor, it will then upgrade the lowest level slot, say a level one slot into a level two slot. If you already have three two slots, then it will upgrade one into a three slot, so on and so forth. One slot upgrade will cost six points, two slot upgrades cost 12 points, and three slot upgrades cost 18 points. These are the second most important things next to straight up skills, as of course, if you can upgrade a level one slot into a level two slot, that just lets you fit a way more important decoration into said slot. Outside of this, we get into a lot more generic statistical upgrades and deficits that you can get on the armor, so let's talk about the specifics of the negative skills. The ways that you can gain more space to have points spent elsewhere. As I mentioned before, anytime a skill is removed from the base armor, it gives you 10 points back. You can have your element resistances lowered. If it is lowered by 1 or 2, this will give you 2 points back. And if it is lowered by 3, you will get 3 points back. Defense can be lowered by either 6 or 12. If it is lowered by 6, you get 3 points back, and if it is lowered by 12, you'll get 5 points back. As for gaining new resistances, new amounts of resistances, you can gain 1 or 2 elemental resistance for each element, and this will cost 2 points from your augment budget. For raw defense, there are 5 potential positive upgrades, and this one gets a little bit complex as it corresponds with the points that each set can have at most as well, which is why I color coded the groupings earlier. I won't say all of this stuff out loud as it is just a whole load of numbers, but it will all be on the screen as information if you want to see every little in and out of the system. The long and short of it is that the lower rarity an armor piece is, the higher potential defense it can gain. The least point cost that this can have is 1, and the most point cost that this can have matches the base point maximum of each group. The biggest defense upgrade for group 1 costs 20 points and is worth 40. The biggest defense upgrade for group 6 costs 10 points and is worth significantly less. Of course, this is just an extreme deep dive. I've gone into a ton of detail on each potential upgrade and the way that they work, but the simplest way to put it, if you want to know how good your personal augment is, is if you've gotten even one skill that is a part of your build and that you are happy to have, you have a good augment. If you've gotten two skills that you're happy with, you've done incredibly well. And if you've done either of those with slot upgrades on top of it, you should be absolutely ecstatic. You can't really get more than a couple of good positives, so if you got that, then you should be happy. The higher rarity your armor piece, the less you can expect it to gain. All of these specifics are in the rest of this video, obviously, but the simple answer to the question is, how good can an armor piece get, is that you can gain one or two useful skills and some slot upgrades, with the quality depending on what rarity your armor is in the first place, and how many negatives you're willing to put up with. If you lose some base skills on the armor, you lose some defenses, you have some more potential for skills gained or for more slots improved, but then you run some risks. So basically, if you see an augment that you're happy with, just move on to your next armor piece. If all five of your current armor pieces get good augments, then you can start looking for the god rolls one at a time. But even then, a god rolled armor augment isn't actually that much better than a relatively average one, so don't feel too held back by the RNG of this system. I hope you've all gotten somewhat of a better understanding of the system today. I know it's just a lot of numbers, and I hope I managed to explain it well enough that it doesn't just sound crazy, but once you start to understand all the data here, it makes it quite a bit make more sense. The system has a lot of depth, but it is also very understandable. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. 
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.